on, that's the way we need to feel this morning. He is all that we want. Uh, you're in control. We want your mercy to flow through this building today. Let somebody leave here blessed of you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank the Lord. Wow. God can do so much in just so little time. Hey, God, and he always knows how to do what needs to be done right now. And so he's a right now God. Hey, God, I do want to remind you in case you haven't um, given anything to missions yet, that you would take time and think about it and pray about it and let Sister Brenda know that you want to do something for missions because if you were here Wednesday night and heard Brother Sullivan's uh, testimony of how God blessed him, but that's not the reason we give, but anyway, but there is a principle, you know, give and it shall be given unto you. Don't give and it'll be taken away what you do have. So, you know, it is worth thinking about. Praise God. If you have your Bibles, I'd like to turn to Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse number 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curse. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Praise God. And you know, the Lord said, not only is it good for you to choose that, but if you will choose that, then it's going to bless your children. It's going to bless generations to come. Thank God. Your family, your marriage, thank God, your eternal destination. Thank God. And then Joshua chapter 24 and verse number 15 says, And if it seemeth evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served, that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Praise God. Joshua understood. Thank God. I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm speaking for my children. I'm speaking for those that are going to look at my life. Praise God. I want to preach from this thought today. Better choices, fewer regrets. Better choices, fewer regrets. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank you for being here today. Thank God. Life is made up of choices that we make. It's nothing more and nothing less than just choices. Some decisions carry very little consequence. Thank God. The diet that you started January the 1st, that you went ahead and ate the Bluebell ice cream anyway. Thank God. I mean, you know, that probably will cost you a few pounds, but nothing, nothing big. Thank God. What you put on this morning, thank God, may uh, have made you feel better or worse, depending on how you thought you should look, and that doesn't really carry a lot of weight. But some of the decisions that we make will shape uh, the rest of our lives. Some of the decisions we make will affect everything that comes after that decision. Thank God. Every day you are writing your story that will be told as you are remembered. Thank God. And the choices you make today will affect the story of your life. And someday, somebody is going to read your story. Thank God. So how you do will, is what's going to be remembered because you are, you know, deciding. And so better choices lead to a better story. Praise God. Now, God made us so that we could choose. Thank God. And it would seem that it would be very easy because the Lord said, I set before you good and evil. I set before you life and death. Thank God. Who would choose death? Who would choose something evil? But the problem is, is that when it's decision-making time, when it's time to make that decision, thank God, often uh, there are pressures at that moment. Because at the moment uh, you are asked to do something that you know is not right to do. Thank God. Either uh, we want you to tell a lie about this little situation, thank God, uh, and you know that... I shouldn't tell a lie about that, but, you know, the pressure's on. If you don't lie, you're going to lose your job. If you do lie, thank God, you may keep your job. But the truth of the matter is, is that what probably will happen is that you'll tell the lie, and the person that you were trying to deceive finds out that a lie was told, and the boss throws you under the bus, and you still lose your job. Thank God. And so the better story would have been that uh, they tried to get me to lie. I didn't lie. I lost my job. Thank God. But my story is a whole lot better than to the other story that I, hey, I, I lied. I lost the job anyway. Thank God. I'm telling you, sometimes we think by doing the easy thing, we're saving ourselves some heartache only to find out that we just made ourselves a lot more heartaches. Because at the moment, thank God, the lie would seem the easier way out. Sometimes 
The right decision is not the easy one, but it's always the best one. Thank God. Study hard so you can make an A on your test or go out with your friends that are going to go out and have a good time. Thank God. You decide. If you go ahead and stay home, they could graduate with honors and, and get a degree, get a good job. They got, or if you go out with them and you become a stock boy somewhere, praise God. And so, you know, it's really seems like a minor decision, but it really affects the eternity of your life as far as worldly decisions and things. Look at the, the life. Uh, when we look at the life of Joseph, it's a beautiful life. Sometimes I call him, I think of him kind of like Jesus in the New Testament. When you look at Joseph's life, it's such a beautiful story. Thank God. And each time, you know, he had uh, some wonderful dreams. He had some wonderful hopes. But uh, it brought him a lot of heartache. Thank God. His brothers uh, hated him. His brothers sold him to be a slave. Thank God. And, you know, he was his dad's pick. He was, <clears throat> whether you realize it or not, uh, they were rich people. Isaac and Abraham and all of them, they had herds, flocks. They were very wealthy people, and he was the pick of the litter, thank God. And so he had uh, good things always came his way because he was his dad's favorite, thank God. But uh, he was sold as a slave. He had to make a choice, thank God. He could be bitter. He could get uh, angry at life because of what had happened to him, but he decided I'll be the best slave that there can be, thank God. And so Joseph became the best slave that he could be, thank God. And it led to him being blessed and prospered. And ultimately, he had such a wonderful position there in Potiphar's house over everything. Thank God. There was nothing that Potiphar didn't trust him with. Everything. Thank God. And so the story could have ended there, but it didn't end there. Thank God. Another chapter was fixing to be written. Uh, Potiphar's wife decided that she would like to have this handsome young man uh, in a relationship. And uh, he had to make a decision. Thank God. He knew that to refuse her ultimately would bring her anger, and it did bring her anger out. Thank God. And it could mean his life because he was just a slave. And if her husband had wanted to, he could just blot him out. But obviously the husband didn't believe her story, but he had to do something. And so he put him in prison for life. Thank God. Not a whole lot better off. Thank God. There he is in prison. Thank God. Joseph, you did the right thing. You told the truth. You wouldn't uh, commit adultery. And, and look where you landed you. Thank God. I can imagine all the voices that spoke to him and said all you'd had to do was went along with it. You would have been blessed. Uh, you could have had, uh, you know, a relationship and could have been uh, some way everything would have worked out. Of course, we don't know how it would have ended if he had went that way. But the truth of it is, he became the best prisoner that you could be. Thank God. He said, well, I'm in the prison. I'll be the best prisoner I can be. Thank God. And he made the best of being in the prison. And of course, you know, we all know the story, how that ultimately Pharaoh has a dream. J Joseph interprets a dream. Thank God. And it's a beautiful ending. But that's not the end of the story. Because there came a moment where that he could get his revenge. Where that he could get back at his brothers. He could get even with those that had put him through all of that. 17 years of all that he had went through was all because of his brothers and what they did to him. Thank God. But when his brothers showed up, thank God, knowing Joseph, he did the right thing. Thank God. And he said, hey, I know y'all meant it for harm. I know y'all was trying to get me down out of the way. Thank God. But God meant it for good. Thank God. And he forgave his brothers. Thank God. And so it's a beautiful story. We love to read that story. Only one thing wrong with Joseph's story, most of us feel like that it will never be our story. I mean, you know, I wished I would have made better decisions. I wished I had done right. But I've got good news for you. Thank God. God doesn't just take care of the perfect. Thank God. He takes care of the down and outers. He takes care of the ones that make some mistakes. Praise God. And one of our favorite Bible characters, praise God. Because I'm telling you, many of us would just disqualify ourselves. Say, hey, I'll never be able to cut the mustard. I'll never be able to make the grade. Joseph set the mark so high. Thank God, next to Jesus, it's hard to find a much better example of how to do the right thing. But, you know, there's another guy in the Bible that we think a whole lot of. Thank God. And his name is David. Thank God. And David, thank God, did some, made some mistakes. He made some bad decisions. Thank God. And he knew, thank God, he got caught up with, you know, that your sins will find you out. He committed adultery. He had a man killed. He, he had to face the music. His children brought him heartache and grief. But in spite of that, thank God, he righted the ship. God forgave him. God righted his ship. Thank God. And ultimately, the Lord was able to say, David was a man after my own heart. And so today I want to come and encourage someone that maybe walked in this building and said, hey, I'm not good enough to be here. I've been too bad, and I don't know how God could love me after all that I've done. Well, I'm telling you, if he could love David, he can love you. Thank God. If he could pick David up, he can pick you up. And so don't give up on yourself. 
Don't give up on the Lord. So today, thank God, you will be given the opportunity, thank God, to right your ship. Today, thank God, you can erase your yesterdays. Thank God, we can't undo yesterday. Thank God, we can't change the story that's already been written. Thank God, when our children read our story, thank God, they're going to see that. But they're, one day they say, hey, but that day, thank God. Everything changed. Thank God. I turned my life over to God. God brought me out. Thank God. I decided to go to heaven instead of hell. Thank God. I decided to choose the good instead of the bad. Thank God. And so like, um, you know, Joseph of old, thank God, your decision will affect not only you, but it will affect your family because he made that decision. Thank God. We have a nation of Israel. If he hadn't have made that decision, we don't know what would have become of Israel. If there had ever been an Israel, but because he was in Egypt, he was able to save his family. And, and so the story is a beautiful thing, thank God. And then we can look at uh, the Word of God and it gives everyone hope here today because you could, thank God, be beginning the beautiful chapter in your life. You could recognize that, hey, I can't change what's already been written, but I can change the end of the story. Thank God. Brother Jody, do you remember the day that you started writing a new book? Thank God. I was hoping Sister Bab would be here. I wanted to mention everyone here today. Thank God. You're sitting here. Thank God. And you have a story that's going to be told. Brother Dooney. Thank God. Brother Paul. Brother Fred. He's got every one of us. There's a story going to be told. And, and every one of you can say, hey, but one day, thank God, I got, a, I got the story right. Thank God. I'm going to have a good ending to my story. Thank God. Because everyone, everyone here today has a story that's going to be told. Thank God. It may be at your funeral. It may be around family get-togethers. But th your story is going to be told. It's going, oh, you remember old brother so-and-so. Remember, you remember dad. You remember my mother. You remember this person. Thank God. And, and, you know, the book is there. Thank God. You can't erase it. Thank God. And, and so how do you want your story to end? How do you want it to be? Thank God. Because sitting around someday, thank God, a host of people that, thank God, can tell the, the day and the time that your life was changed. And so today... Uh, these people, all of you that decided to start living for God, I can assure you, they could tell you I have no regrets for the day that I started living for God. The only regret I have, I didn't start sooner. But thank God, some of you, thank God, if you only knew what God had planned in your life, if you only knew what God wanted to do for you, thank God, you would quickly run to Him. Thank God, because He said it like this, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall, and shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. Thank God. And I will, and if you will, and, and you shall seek me, thank God, and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. And so today, thank God, what a beautiful chance we have to be able to begin to fix our hearts on something better. Thank God, making some better choices. So that we'll have some fewer regrets. Thank God. And today is a beautiful time to just be able to understand that God wants to turn my life around. He wants to help me to get back on track. Some of you that's been living for God and you're going through a rough place and the enemy is trying to tell you what's the use. Thank God I'm telling you the use is, is that someday your story is going to be told. Someday somebody's going to look at that and say, yeah, but he got up. Thank God he didn't stay there. He kept on running. He kept on going. Praise God. Thank God. While we're standing today... So today, I set before you life and death. I set before you good and evil. Thank God. And you will have to choose. Thank God. Today, it will be good or it will be one more day of despair, one more day of sin, uh, feeling hopeless, one more day of wondering, I wonder what I should do. Thank God. I'm telling you, if you would just give him a chance, thank God, he would do above and beyond. He could fix things that look unfixable. Thank God. He could deliver you from things that look like you could never be delivered from. He can break habits that you thought could never be broken. Praise God, because there's testimonies here today that God can deliver, that God can break testimonies. Thank God. You're not going to always be an alcoholic. Thank God, because you get delivered and you are no longer an alcoholic. Thank God. You're no longer having to battle that because deliverance has come. Thank God. Jesus said, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden and laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. And so the Lord is just saying, come on. Thank God. It was Jesus that said in the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood crying, said, if any man thirsts, then come and drink. 
He that believeth on me, as the scriptures have said, out of his bellies is going to flow rivers of living water. And so today, Jesus is offering you life. He's offering you living water. He's offering you a changed life. And on top of all of that, he's offering you eternity in heaven. Praise God. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Praise God, because the water that he gives, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water is going to thirst again. But whoever drinketh the water that I shall give unto him shall never thirst. But it will be waters that shall give unto them. they got a well of water springing up in eternal life. Come on, I'm telling you, God's got something beautiful that he wants to do for you today. Thank God, don't put off the good. Praise God. Why not go ahead and let the good things start coming your way? Because God really does care about you. So all it takes, thank God, it's a gift. You have to earn it. You don't have to get good to get it. Thank God. You just got to get him. Thank God. And he will help you to become good. So today you can make the choice. Thank God. That will forever change your life. While we sing a chorus, I wonder if there's someone here today that's ready to take that step. Thank God. Ready to pray that prayer. Praise God.